pretty strong in the gym. So, um, happy to pick up a win this year, obviously. Just uh, grind out there, but the gym is really good. All right. I mean, I mean, putting my name on the trip means a lot. It's a big confidence booster for uh, obviously this summer and just getting another win under my belt. Every experience is different, so it's nice to pick up the different ones and learn from them. Uh, looking forward to uh, this same event upcoming week and trying to get as many wins as I can. How many total tournaments? Oh, that's, that's a tough question. I actually couldn't tell you, but if I had to guess, probably around 30 or 35. Okay, so from like junior to Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so take me through your thought process coming in the round. You're only one shot back. That's it. You're playing right next to the counter. And I know you're going to know basically what you have to do. Yeah. Take me through your thought process coming into the Coming into the season. Coming into the season. Coming into the Honestly, um, if I were to, to pick a position to be in going into the last day, it would be one shot back. Uh, I'm playing who likes to come from behind and kind of, as my mental coach say, putting a foot down on the other opponent's neck. Just kind of, kind of coming from behind and um, being able to push and then once getting that move, kind of roll with it. So, um, I had a good friend on the back yeah, made it easy to stay calm and everything. We had a good warm up and I was just excited to get the day started. Was that having someone going back that helped to you or I saw you out there kind of having kind of directing a little bit around it. Was that just kind of the way for you to just enjoy yourself and not be so stressed about it? Yeah, absolutely. It really, it really does kind of set us down. I mean, having him on the back, it honestly takes all the nerves away. <laughs> In, in that position, you're playing with a, a friend who's kind of just walking along and doesn't know anything about golf. So it honestly, it makes it, it makes it funny and it makes it a little more enjoyable. So. Um, can you, what's your name? Can you spell the keyholes that I saw and then we'll go back to your scorecard to the there. Absolutely. Take me through, take me through number 11. You made 30 there. Okay. You roll in about, I would say, a 15 footer or so. At that time, how important was that for you to just kind of keep the momentum going? Because you missed a short birdie on 10. It was very important, like you said. Um, honestly, the whole, the whole front side, I was striking the ball really well, just not getting um, really any birdie putts to drop. And then that one on 10, obviously, where I think Patrick actually made birdie there, so that put me back down. So make birdie on that next, but I actually made a ball switch just meant to get me different mentally and uh, put a really good roll on that one, and it was nice to see that one drop dead set, and that kind of uh, gave me a nice little confidence boost for the next upcoming holes where I was able to make a few more clutch putts. So what did you hit? You hit off the driver off the tee there? I hit a driver off the tee. I kind of just pulled a little bit into the left rough and um, I had a, had a really good lie so I was kind of expecting it to jump so I went down a club to a 54 degree. From how far? Uh, from 125 Okay. and uh, it did exactly what I expected, jumped and was able to fly it just on the front of the green and let it release a little bit from 8 to 10 feet. So okay. It's nice to see the shots be executed how you drew them yeah, up. Exactly. <laughs> But then, then twelve, you don't, you don't get get a break there on the left side. Can you just take me through that whole process? What what was going on out there? So I kind of ended up hitting another drive left that uh, ended up settling in a hole. And uh, when we when we felt right in the hole, there was no sprinkler head that there was a tree trunk. So um, we wanted to get a rolling just to see if we could possibly get a relief, considering um, it. Could have been considered ground under repair. Obviously, it wasn't marked at that time. So, um, I, I think it kind of helped. I going into it, I just kind of prepared mentally, thinking I wasn't going to get relief. Just that way, I would get my hopes up and then then be brought right back down. So, either way, I was kind of um, just allowing them to do the rolling and take whatever happens. Ended up having to stay in the hole. So, uh, mentally, I was still in it. Um, was able to hit it out and get up and down. This was uh, again a really big spot, making par after that birdie. So, so was it like a, like a where a tree stump used to be, and it was like a little crater kind of thing? It, it, like dirt or? I mean, it seemed like it was just like a 
tree trunk that they didn't cut the tree all the way down and then but they're all the roots that went off created like little ditches almost and I guess the roots were gone, but the tree stuff was still there, and it filled up with real thick grass. So I was basically hitting into like a, a dirt wall, but um, I just knew I needed to get enough loft to get it over a little hump at first, and I'll just be fine with whatever happened after that. Take me, take me through that cut, because at the time, you know, you could, you could get down and say, oh, my things aren't going my way, or get really frustrated at not being able to get through the leaf. Take me through your process of just being able to set out, you know, just how, how it is sometimes at all, and then be able to get up and down, especially at the time when you're down with Josh Ryan, who's ahead of me. Yep, absolutely. Um, I just kind of, again, like I said, it was a grind out there today, so... Um, when you're in that position, there's there's no time you give up, no time you... I mean, I actually lined up my ball and uh, had it just a little right of what I wanted. And I'm guilty of times where, eh, it's all right, I'll just kind of go with it. And there was a time where I had it just a little right and knew it's in the, I'm in the moment. I, I'm in a position where I need to... These are putts you need to make, so I went back and realigned it up to something that I really liked and put a good stroke on it and was able to get it to sneak in right center. So. And another key moment, take me through 16. You hit your, you hit your shot into the water hazard. What did you hit off the tee there? It was a little bit of an indecision there. I could have hit a hard eight, but I ended up trying to ease off a seven and just never really got through it and just kind of blocked it out right. Um, really, how far, like 170? Yeah, the, the stick was yeah. 170. Okay. Um, but I mean, it's tougher to get mad with my friends on the way. I don't know why, but uh, I mean, he's asking me, like, so what, what number of shot are we hitting next? So he has no idea what's going on. So I mean, you can't get mad at that. So I just kind of sticking with it. I knew still right right in the mix. Need to get up and down there. Um, went through it smart, I believe, in, uh, in the drop process of finding a spot where dropping it would get it back into the hazard so I'd be able to place it. Um, gave myself a really good lie and then just kind of hit a nice little flop shot on, um, right on my spot that I wanted to run it and rolled up. Right in the trees there, you punch it out to the left side of the green, able to get up and down. You talked about your momentum enough, we'll move on through that. But what did you um, punch? What uh, iron did you punch on the inside? I hit a four iron out in the trees there from 120 to a stick. I knew it was going to be very difficult to get it on the green there. I was honestly just trying to put it exactly where I did, just left in the green and give me some green to work with. Well, where, did you know where you stood when you stepped on the 18th feet? I did know where I stood. Uh, uh, they had a card out there with a the leaderboard, but uh, also was able to get told from uh, my dad. So. So when you're on that tee shot, knowing you have a, a two shot lead, does your thought process change what you're hitting there? I know you didn't get pulled driver, but does your thought process change at all there? It did a little bit. I was thinking about hitting a three iron off the tee, but um, I figured well, there. I don't know. At that point, it really wasn't. Uh, I I knew Patrick. If he would have made birdie, um, I would have. If I would have made boogie and he made birdie, we we're in a playoff. Um, so honestly, but I've been in that position several times where it's not. It's just another hole you're playing. So stuck stuck with my original game plan. Hit driver. Blocked it a little bit, but still have shot to the green. Was able to knock that one on. Had a really nice cheap up win. So, what did you what you hit from the rough there? I I again had a little flyer lie, so I hit gap wedge, which is a 50 degree from 140. Uh, just to the I had trees blocking me right at the stick, so I just kind of aimed left side of the green for safety and. I'll uh, put it right where I want it. Now, walking up, you know you have three putts to win the tournament. What, what's, your, what's your thought process? What are you thinking when you're walking up and you see all these people standing out, cheering for you, walking up to the rings? Uh, thankfully, it's you know, I've had that experience before. So, um, And honestly, I'm one who, the more people watching, the better I feel. So um, really, it, honestly, I love I loved having uh, the people there. and. Uh, the walk up, in my head, I really didn't know I had three plus to win. I mean, Patrick had a nice birdie look, and I had about a 45-foot lag putt. So I still knew I needed to focus, needed to uh, get a good read on the putt. And, um, was able to get a nice read and hit a 
pretty much uh, but exactly where I wanted to tap in range. So, um, and then he ended up uh, just missing his birdie putt. So at that point, but I had to tap in. So what does it mean to have all the support you had on your family and your friends? Just being out, you know, having your friends caddy for you, having your follow along. Means everything. I mean, uh, wouldn't be here if it weren't for them. Uh, parents do a fantastic job supporting me. Um, just getting me everywhere, and uh, uh, they're a huge help. And then obviously, my friends uh, Coley and George on the bag was a big help, taking some weight off my back, and just just having some nice talks in between shots and keeping me calm and all that. So uh, it means everything. So. How do you just do for yourself this week? Where obviously you have some experience in one sport, but this this tournament is probably unlike any other one that you've won. Um, so what does this do for you? Uh, like I said, it's a big confidence booster. Um, we're actually off to yes. Pinehurst next, uh, on Friday for the North South. So okay. uh, just kind of uh, we started the summer. Uh, this is actually our third win. So kind of keeping our confidence building up like a snowball and uh, rolling on in the next few tournaments. Okay, cool. And uh, your mom's name? Terry Baca. How do you spell that? K-E-R-R-I. Dad's name? Kevin, K-E-V-I-N. Okay. And I'd like to also give okay. some credit to my swing coach, Ray Carrazzo. Ray, R-A-Y, yep. spell the last name, please. C-A-R-A-Z-O. C-A-R-A-Z-O. And then mental coach, Mike Carrazzo. Are they brothers? They're father, son. Okay. And where are they out of? Florida. Okay, where in Florida? Uh, Ray is in Sorrento, uh, which is about an hour north of Orlando. It's S O R E. Or two R's. S O R R E N T O. Okay. 